Melvin the Tank Paul was an accomplished amateur fighting out of the Desire Boxing Club in New Orleans. Notably, he was one of the U.S. boxers who declined an invitation to travel to Poland in 1980, a fateful trip that ended in tragedy when the plane crashed. Uh, heading into this bout with uh, Terence Ali, Paul was the more experienced of the two. Uh, though he had suffered losses to headliners like uh, Hector Camacho, Robin Blake, and Choo Choo Brown, he also spoiled the undefeated records of Bobby Johnson and Tyrone Crawley, capturing the ESPN lightweight title in the process. Meanwhile, Terence Ali was a street fighter from Guyana, moving to the United States with the ambition of making a name for himself in boxing, and he's on the road to do just that, quickly becoming a favorite on ESPN. And here we go. I think everybody around here feels this should be an excellent fight because of the contrasting style. Melvin Paul, the shorter of the two fighters, likes to come in and uh, likes to work inside if he can. He has a good overhand right, excellent body puncher. And Terrence Ali, tall, long, lanky with a jab and a straight right hand. Paul missing with that flurry. Paul was down early against Charlie Choo Choo Brown. Rallied in that fight and knocked Brown down the 15th round. And really didn't follow up on his advantage, which really surprised people. Landed effectively with that right hand on Terrence Ali. And he said later on that he thought he had the fight won. The right hand is scoring well for Melvin Paul. And he just opened a cut on the left cheekbone of Ali with those three straight right hands. I said he had a good right. And yes, indeed, that's the punch that knocked Charlie Choo Choo Brown down. It should not affect... Terrence Ali much at all. It's under the eye, high on the cheekbone. But you know what? That's a message to Terrence Ali. Ali has been so dominant in his recent fights, and in the first minute of this fight, he gets clubbed with a couple of right hands and a cut open. Just a little sidelight about Melvin Paul, who's really ready for this fight. He came in about a pound and a half overweight at the weigh-in. Uh, they made him lose the pound and a half, obviously. He went out and he did a little running down the hall. And he came back and he was a half a pound over. And they still made him get that half a pound off. And he was angry when he left the weigh-in. I think they added motivation to Melvin Paul's, if he needs any, after losing two fights, uh, big fights. Uh, I think they made him even angrier. And Melvin Paul fights better when he's got some inner motivation. Let's look scoring for Terrence Ali as he becomes very aggressive. Counterpunch by Paul. You know, it's a misnomer to think that Ali is just a boxer because he's got tremendous power, or that uh, Melvin Paul is just a brawler because he's got good defensive skills. Less than half a minute to go in the first round. And I said that Paul needed to be on the inside to do well. Well, he's landing from the outside with that overhand right. Surprising, usually it's Paul who does the charging in. Absolutely. Here Ali is charging. This fight is the uh, reversal of the form we expected. But yet, uh, Melvin Paul is fighting well. Countering well. Final second, round one, our main event on top rank boxing. By uh, Terrence Ali. Round two, scheduled for 12. The ESPN lightweight championship, Melvin Paul is the title holder. He won the title from... Tyrone Butterfly Crawley and then defended it August 4th of 1983 against Bobby Johnson winning a 12 round decision. Just a moment ago Melvin Paul walked into a right hand from Terrence Ali as he was coming in. That is what Terrence Ali wants. How intriguing it is Ali chasing Melvin Paul in this fight. What a surprise that is. Ali in the gold trunks. Melvin Paul in the deep blue. Good left hook by Terrence Ali. And he has an excellent left hook over Melvin Paul. And then he fought uh, Charlie Choo Choo Brown for the IBF championship and close fight. And he thought he had won the fight, as I mentioned. Uh, his corner thought they had the fight won, and he really uh, didn't go after the knockout against Choo Choo Brown the 15th after knocking him down. The caution from Tony Orlando to Melvin Paul for holding. Terrence Ali charges in and scores with a left hook. And Paul ties him up. Round two much different than the first round. Ali's able to get the left hook in and an occasional straight right hand. And this round, it's Melvin Paul who's felt the power of Terrence Ali. Terrence Ali works under the tutelage of Donald Hayes. Has not lost a fight since uh, Hayes took him over. After Ali lost.
lost the 10 round decision to that was to Johnny Summerhays good, com 16, good combination excuse me Sam good combination by Paul and he has good hand speed uh, doesn't use those combinations as often as they would like late in the second round several that landed round three scheduled for 12 Terrence Ali in the gold trunks the dark trunks the dark blue Melvin Paul the ESPN lightweight champion you see the knockout ratio Ali has nine knockouts in his 22 professional fights 19 wins and Melvin Paul 11 knockouts in his 20 pro fights 17 wins now despite that graphic I think they're a little more equal in punching power than that would indicate uh, it points out that they're uh, both pretty good punchers. Now, Lee has become a much better puncher than working with Don Hayes. An extra action Tony on the Orlando, inside. yeah, stopping things and cautioning Melvin Paul. He had told the fighters to stop punching, and then Paul kept punching while Orlando was trying to get in there, cautioning him for holding. Terrence Ali looks a little upset. You know, that left hook that we came back and showed you at the beginning of the round, uh, Leslie Bonanno told Melvin Paul in between rounds, when, when Ali throws that looping left hook, plant yourself and throw your short counter right, and that punch will get in. Terrence Ali turned pro in 1979, fought his early fights in Trinidad, some in Canada, came to the United States in 1982. combination punching of Paul. Uh, some people forget about that because of that weapon, the clubbing right, but when he punches kind of oh, good. Oh, solid right hand that shook up Terrence Ali. Ali. Coming back. Seems to be under control. He was stunned momentarily by a good right hand from Melvin Paul. He seemed to anger Ali, and he came back with some counter shots, but uh, Paul got the best of that uh, it's like a battle of Ali's left hook and Melvin Paul's right hand. I think that's an accurate assessment. Neither fighter using their other weapons that effectively. Late in round three for the ESPN lightweight championship and Ali scored well charging in. You're watching Top Rank Boxing live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. what angered Terrence Ali. Live action round four scheduled for 12. Terrence Ali. Brooklyn, New York gets tagged with that left-right combination by Melvin Paul from New Orleans. Ali is 23 years old. Paul is 25. And Paul continues to drop that right hand in there effectively. You know, I'm really surprised that Ali hasn't been able to pick it off. Now look, about scoring. look at my scoring shows. I gave the last round to Paul as I did the first round, the second one to Ali. And those three rounds were very close. So the scoring could be just about anyway on the official scorecard. You know, Paul is a very short fighter, does not have a long reach, but he's using his left jab to set up that right now. And, you know, a jab is timing more even than reach. And uh, Melvin Paul, when he gets his jab on track, has a pretty good one. He drives that right hand, keeps going, though Paul tried to time up. You know, these are two fighters who love to fight. They love to box. Their zeal for the sport uh, is really immense, and they both come in in good shape for fights, and uh, I think they're both pretty good ring technicians. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I think so far it's been entertaining and may get more so. Oh, that clubbing right hand got in there, and another right hand scores for Melvin Paul. And you know what Melvin Paul did there? He worked the body, and that has been absent. He wanted to work... Ali's body in this fight, and there's a right to the body. So Melvin Paul picking up the beat even more here in round four. I wonder if the quickness of Melvin Paul is surprising Terrence Ali. It does every opponent he fights, and I think it is surprising Ali a little bit too. But Ali showing some of his own here late in the fourth round as he chases but gets caught with a right hand again. Melvin Paul landing big. And as we come to the bell ending round four. Ali's been little... Uh, overly aggressive and has uh, caught some counter punches from Paul. We're at Resorts International Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Top ranked boxing's main event. The ESPN lightweight championship. Melvin Paul, the champion, his second title defense in the blue trunks. Terrence Ali, the challenger in the gold. 
cut under the left eye of Terrence Ali, he was open up the first round, has not bothered him at all, has done a good job on it in the corner. What bothered Terrence Ali is in the right hand of Melvin Paul. And in the last round, Paul started to go to the body more, and in between rounds, uh, we uh, listened in as Leslie Bonanno, his manager and trainer, told him, I want more body work. They feel very much Ali will tire out later on. He has been on the fringes of breaking into the world rankings. He's been right there, ready to leap in. He's had a couple of chances. Ali switching to southpaw here. Melvin Paul was there when he fought Robin Blake, lost it. Then is went in again for the IBF lightweight championship against Choo Choo Brown and lost that one. And so this is an important fight for Melvin Paul. Ali trying to confuse Paul a little bit with the southpaw style. Now you wonder if this will make the overhand right of Paul even more effective, and there he lands. Got it in there. He comes in with those flurries. The you know, tank, that's what they call him. As a southpaw, Ali's using his right jab much more than he used his left jab when he was uh, a righty. So maybe he did this to get his jab going against Paul. Oh, good left hook by Melvin Paul. That one stunned Ali, and he's holding on. See how much impact it had. Ali backing up for one of the few times in the fight. Melvin Paul showing good power. Good jab by Ali. Trying to keep Melvin Paul off him, but the tank keeps coming. As we come to the end of round five. See him land it in round five. Live action round six. The ESPN lightweight championship on the line. Melvin Paul trying to defend. And Terrence Ali trying to take it away. Paul looking very confident at this point. I have this fight scored very much in favor of Melvin Paul. Now, some of those rounds are close, but the last two especially, I thought Melvin Paul came on strongly, so I've got him ahead four to one. You said that with a big sigh as if you're not sure. I'm okay. sure, but, the, you know, the judges may be seeing it differently, and that is unofficial, but I, I feel very much that Paul has done more effective punching. I agree with you. I think Melvin Paul has looked the best that I've seen him getting in a right hand uppercut. Good right hand by Ali, a straight one. Ali looking like he wants to land a big punch. Gets in a good, solid right hand uppercut. That shook up Melvin Paul a little bit. You know, Ali having a very good beginning here in round six. What he has to worry about is walking into one of those counter shots of Paul. That's happened before. <laughs> Left hook scores. Terrence Ali making faces at Melvin Paul, saying, you didn't hurt me at all. Ali is very animated in the ring always. And uh, when he wins, often does a, a complete backflip. But uh, we may or may not get to see that tonight. <laughs> might be too tired to do it after if this he fight. wins that is right now he's got all he can handle in Melvin Paul but this is a very good sixth round for Ali from our vantage point it looked like Paul opening up the lead but now Terrence Ali trying to turn things around Looking a lot sharper in the sixth round and Melvin Paul has not done all that much Late in round six. Paul doing the backing up, and Ali doing the chasing. Landed with that left hand as we come to the bell. End of the sixth round in the corner of Melvin Paul. Leslie Bonanno comes in. Take a look at Terrence Ali on the move. And look at that right hand uppercut. Good, solid punch by Terrence Ali. That should tell you something about the chin of Melvin Paul. If you want to win this fight, you understand me? You've got to jump on him and stay on him. And I mean punch him with both hands, weave to get under. Once you make that first weave and get in, I don't want to see you back up. Uh -huh. You want this fight? Yeah, I want you to. Get on him. Let's don't have no bullshit about whether you're going to win. I want you to stay on him. If you want it bad enough, show me. Uh -huh. don't, don't give him the belt, All right? <laughs> Leslie Bonanno with the uh, words to Melvin Paul, and there's another angle of that right hand uppercut by Terrence Ali. Lead him with you. Lead him with you. All right. Uh, a deep breath. 
keep him in sight. There's Terrence Alley, 23 years old, coming in with a record of 19-2 and 1. His second fight in 1984, April 5th. Dante's with Charles Adams in the seventh round here in Atlantic City. Normally, Leslie Bonanno with uh, more technical advice in the corner, in this case, trying to pump up and follow some very authoritative words. As Donald Hayes was leaving Ali's corner, I, I don't know if everyone heard it, he said, use that jab. He wants Ali to use the jab. Good matchup here. It is indeed, and uh, I think both these fighters have the kinds of skills that makes for an interesting fight. Fourth round, he was using that punch effectively, setting up oh, the right. Good left hook by Terrence Ali. Digging some shots. He's got a powerful left hook. If he gets that on track, Paul could be in some trouble. Some ill will developing here now. Orlando giving a warning to both fighters for hitting on the break. <laughs> some nasty comments in there. Ali with some talk to Melvin Paul. Paul has gotten cautious the last two rounds. Half a minute to go in round seven. He is not counter punching. There you see Ali wading in, trying to hit him and lunging, and Paul is not landing the counter shots he was earlier. The key difference. Final seconds of the seventh round. You're watching Top Rank Boxing from Atlantic City. ESPN Lightweight Championship, and we'll be right back. Against Melvin Paul in round seven. This is round eight. In the corner of Melvin Paul, Leslie Bonanno telling him he gave away the last two rounds. That's the way we see it from our vantage point as well as Terrence Ali has closed this fight after the early lead by Melvin Paul. It is very close at this point in anybody's fight. And Leslie Bonanno has told Melvin Paul, you're just standing and posing. You're not doing anything. It's Ali who's doing it. Paul has not been able to back him up in the last two rounds. What he wants Ali to do is throw, give him some head movement and come in like that. And then when he gets inside, work the body and the head of Ali. Good right hand. And he's talking to Melvin Paul and taunting Melvin Paul. Remember early when it was Ali chasing Melvin Paul. Now it's Ali on his bicycle and Melvin Paul coming in and Ali trying to hit him with counter shots. Boy, Melvin has really slowed his pace yes. in the last three rounds. So effective in two, three, and four. Why do you think that's happened? It's almost a surprise. It looked like he was totally dominating at the end of the fifth round, and then it just went away from him. Well, Melvin Paul has a history of doing this. He did it in the Brown fight. He did it against Robin Blake, even to an extent against Crawley. Uh, he kind of phases out during portions of fights. He's not doing what Panano wants him to do, which is slip and slide, get inside, and then work with the left hook to the body and the head, and he's capable of that. He better phase back in, otherwise he's <laughs> going to fight. He seemed to feel that Ali was wearing down. No signs of it at the start of this ninth round. Let's check Al's round-by-round -round scoring. You'll see the way this fight has gone, the way Al sees it. Well, obviously, uh, those third, fourth, and fifth rounds, Paul was coming on, but then Terrence Ali started to come on in the sixth and seventh, and uh, I made the uh, eighth round even, so uh, I've got a four, three, and one. Very close. I gave Ali that round by, oh, just a, maybe one punch, but I, I scored it for Ali, and yeah. that's how close it is. I would have maybe leaned toward Ali, but I felt the second half of the round, he was so uh, lethargic with his punches. We are now in the final third of this fight. Melvin Paul won the first third. The second third went to right. Terrence Ali, and this is championship time, the last four rounds. And at some point here, at this point in the fight to have battered Ali's body so that Ali couldn't give him any movement. That hasn't happened. Right, no Early in the fight, back. he was dropping that right hand in repeatedly. We're seeing it land in this round for the first time in several rounds. Right hand uppercut from long range again. Scores for Terrence Ali. This combination work by Ali. Final seconds of the ninth round. Back. You see Terrence Ali go to his corner. Melvin Paul right, sits down. Leslie Bonanno comes in to talk to him. To me. You win that round. Do you realize when you get into the guy, but you're going to have to give a supreme effort and you're going to have to stay there? Okay, so you're starting to own him. You hit him with two and three punch combinations and you stop. You okay. win the round, but you might take the guy out if you keep enough pressure on him. 
you in good condition, you know you're in good condition, the guy's starting to fade. He ain't gonna fade unless you keep the pressure on him. You understand? Apply, apply, apply. You're starting to you see him rumbling off two and three punches inside. And the next time you get inside, would you please give me an uppercut? When he gets in here, shoot it and back with the hook. Give me some body work and we can take Three more rounds to come in. Be careful when you're going in the corner. They come with a right hand too. Terrence Ali, Melvin Paul. For the ESPN Lightweight Championship, this is round 10, a very close fight. No knockdowns. Melvin Paul keeps getting hit with that left hook by Ali. One of the reasons is that he's not bending at the waist like he would normally do, getting low and trying to work his way in. Part of the reason he's not doing that is because when he does that, he gets hit with the uppercut by Ali. Did drop in the right hand. Lancing hook scores for Terrence Ali. Ali gets in the uppercut. Paul comes back. Right hand and the combination works for Terrence Ali, followed with a left. As Paul backing up again, Ali charging in after Melvin Paul. Well, for Ali, that's the posture in which he has taken some good counter right, so he's got to be careful, even though he has certainly stunned Paul in this round. Back and forth they go, almost round to round. Changing the way the momentum seems to be going in this fight. One round, it's Ali, another one, it's Paul. Paul angered by what he considers uh, Paul leaning on his head. You, Terrence Ali still has a little street fight in him when he's out there charging in like that. That's a good point, and I think Donald Hayes would like to see a little less of that. Working the body. Final seconds of the 10th round, scheduled for 12 for the ESPN Lightweight Championship. Ali and Ali didn't like it. Prior to the bell sounding, starting the 11th round, Terrence Ali walked all the way across the ring, almost into the corner of Melvin Paul. Tony Orlando had to grab him physically and bring him back into his corner and warn him about coming out too soon and charging across like that. Melvin Paul has started out round 11 differently than almost any of the last four or five rounds. He's staying close with Ali and punching with him. That's what Leslie Bonanno pleaded with him to do for the last two rounds. And Leslie Bonanno said to Melvin Paul, go to war in these final two rounds. We'll see because the way I see it, Al, I have the fight dead even. To begin this round very aggressively, he's uh, slowed down a little bit. Well, Melvin Paul's gotten on the inside and done some good work, but now they've both kind of stopped punching. A took scored for Terrence Ali. That's been his best punch. They are making this round a very tough to score. Back and forth they go. Good left hook by Ali. Final seconds of the 11th round. The left hook was blocked that time by Melvin Paul. And Ali a little wild as he tries to finish strongly, coming to the end of the 11th round. We are getting set for the 12th, possibly the final round. We're, let's go into the corner of the ESPN lightweight champion, Melvin Paul. Unless you're backing up. I do it. Yeah, you know what you got to do? You got to go out jumping and dance this round and stay there. But I'm talking to you. You got to be out there and do it. They own it this round, Melvin. Be different if this guy could beat you. You can beat the guy, but you can't beat him backing up. Forget the boxing and get you getting right where you want to be and you're holding him. No, hold him. That's where you want to be. When you get there, I mean, turn him loose and don't stop. Melvin, you want to go get him. Go get him. Melvin, you need this round to hold that. There's that right hand uppercut that Ali has scored effectively and surprisingly from long range. Yeah, and that's a punch you would expect him to get countered on, but he hasn't been. And boy, it could all be on the line here on the 12th round. 12th round could be the last one. Look at Terry. Terrence Ali racing across. Tony Orlando gets him the touch gloves. This could be it. If it ends in a draw on the judges' scorecard, they'll fight a 13th round. 
you know, this has not been an easy fight to referee. Wow. We've talked about the good work Tony Orlando's done. This has been a tough one to officiate. And has not been an easy fight to score. A lot no. of pressure on the judges on this one. Good left took by Paul. Now, but you heard Bonanno tell him in no uncertain terms, when you're on the inside, don't hold, go to work. There's the jab by Paul. Boy, where's that punch for that's where they want Paul to work, and he's doing it. Yes. He lands a good left hook. Good work by Melvin Paul. That's where he has the advantage. He's short, he's stocky, he's got shorter arms, and he can punch better on the inside. The tank, surprisingly, has been backed up a lot in this fight. And we thought he'd be the one moving in almost constantly. Good well, right hand. Excellent. That that's stunned Terrence Ali momentarily. Sent him off balance. Right hand. Opened up a big lead for Melvin Paul in the first half of this fight. Terrence Ali, and he looks good doing it, too. He does, indeed. Tough battle between two good lightweights. Melvin Paul and Terrence Ali. Right hand scores for Ali. He, or rather, for Melvin Paul. He caught Ali coming in. Good work to the body by Melvin Paul. Paul is keeping his hands moving. Now, look at the clock. There's one minute left in this round, and Paul has won the first two minutes. Let's see if Ali comes back in this last minute, and if he does, if that persuades some judges. What an excellent round, though, thus far for Melvin Paul. A superb round. And this, quite frankly, was his game plan. The way he's fighting in this 12th round, this was the plan he had set to fight the entire fight. He really hasn't kept to it. Paul has been 12 rounds several times before, went 15 with Charlie Chichu Brown. Paul uh, Ali, as I said, never been past 10, and you can see Ali looking a bit fatigued. Half a minute to go on the 12th, less than half, down to 20 seconds to go. Ali is reduced to holding now. Good round for Melvin Paul as he finishes well. Could be a decisive finish for Melvin Paul as he tries to retain his ESPN lightweight championship. They trade left hooks. And that's it. Let's hear it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now there's the embrace. For a moment, it looked like they wanted to continue, but there's the congratulations. They will keep the gloves on, awaiting the decision, because as I mentioned, if there is a draw, they will fight a 13th round. And on my scorecard, Mr. Bernstein, okay. I have it six rounds for Paul, six rounds for Ali. What do you have? I have it 6-5 with one even for Melvin Paul. You gave him the last two rounds. Yes, so we will see. And there's John That's Stewart, John one Stewart of the officials here. Checking at his, his card. And we await the decision of John Stewart, Eva Shane, and Harold Letterman. And that is Harold Letterman across the way from John Stewart. Checking this, his scorecard. One of the things that made this fight such a tough one to score is that the styles changed almost every two or three rounds. Uh, at times it was Paul backing up and Ali chasing him. Then it was Paul getting on the inside as we look at Eva Shane uh, going over her scorecard. Uh, each man changed roles. One was the counterpuncher, then another was the counterpuncher. So it made it tough. I think an indication of how close this fight is, of the, the nature of the uh, work being done by the judges as they check over their scorecard again and again, going over it carefully to make sure there is absolutely no mistake made. This is a very, very close fight. You know, with both these fighters sitting in their corners, both cornermen talking to them, you get the feeling they almost expect a draw Good. and expect to have to fight another round. We'll they, see. It might be. We will see. The cards have been collected by Michael Buffer. They are being checked over. And you know, Sam, if they do have to go into an extra round, you have to feel that Paul has an advantage because I think he's been much fresher toward the end of this fight. And uh, Ali, especially in that 12th round, did look tired. And as we pointed out, uh, Paul has been there before. Melvin, Ali hasn't. Melvin Paul looked outstanding in the 12th round. He's got his mouthpiece in and ready to go. Here is the announcement on the decision from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen from Resorts International Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, here is the official scoring. Judge Don Stewart scores it seven rounds to five. Judge Harold Letterman scores it six rounds to five, one even. 
Judge Eva Shane scores it seven rounds to five for the winner by unanimous decision. And a new ESPN wow. lightweight champion. He took it Tom away by a unanimous Ali. decision. Terrence Ali has won it. A unanimous decision, but so close. Terrence, uh, I thought that uh, early on in that fight, he surprised you a little bit with his hand speed, but then you were able to deal with that as the fight went on. Yeah, Melvin Paul is a very great fighter. He's a good fighter. He's, he was up there in the top 10. He's the ESPN champ. And I must congratulate him for fighting so good. He's a very good fighter. But th that wasn't the best of Terrence Ali. You see, I uh, was some problems with the weight. But, uh, like, Did you uh, feel you could have performed better in this fight? Yeah, uh, definitely I could have performed better. That was my best performance. Not even one of my bad days. But well, I'll even be next time. Okay, even on your bad day, you were able to beat Paul in a very close decision. Now, he never was able to get on the inside until the last round, really, and work the body like he wanted. I yeah. thought maybe you got a little tired in that 12th round. Did you feel fatigued? Yeah, that, not that much. I was fatigued, yeah. But, you see, uh, I had some problem with my weight. I went to the steam room this morning, and, you know, I was weighing on the wrong scale. But thank God I win. I'm very proud about it. I'd like to say hello to everybody who's watching out there, Guyanese, and everybody else. All right, Jimmy Glenn, your manager, is here. And Jimmy, I'm wondering, uh, turn toward the camera, Jimmy. Um, based upon Terrence's performance here tonight, do you think that this uh, indicates that he's ready to step up, maybe an option fight, even a, a, a better fighter than Paul? Right. Yes. Well, what, what gave you that indication? I knew it before this fight. I would like to fight Harry Arroyo for the IBF championship. Okay. But we couldn't get it, you know. All right, congratulations to you, Terrence Ali. And let's bring Melvin Paul in our... Thank uh, you very much. Now the former ESPN lightweight champion, but a, a gentleman who fought a tremendous fight here tonight. And uh, Melvin, a very close fight. I guess first I have to ask you if you thought maybe you might have ended up on the uh, better side of the score. Well, I had a fight. I had a fight scheduled, and it was canceled. So it kind of, you know, threw me off on training. And, uh, you know, just one of them things there. But I'm quite sure if I had a, if I had a tuna fight before this fight here, I'd be much more busier. So what I did, you know, I, I fought in his first light. I didn't have uh, what I want to have to come out, all, you know, crawl him out all, all over like I always do. If I had the chance to do it again, I would be all over Terrence Ali. I thought that in the 12th round, finally, uh, you did what I know Leslie was urging you to do and what I know you wanted to do. Slip the jab, get inside, and then work on the inside. Yes, I did. Like I said, the, 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 the layoff I had from the other fight and the, the fight that was postponed, it, it made me somewhat rusty. And I really tried real hard, but, you know, I had to fight in his first light, and his first didn't get it from me. Leslie, I know you were urging Melvin to try and slip and get on the inside. Were you surprised early in the fight when he was able to land those uh, clubbing right hands? No, I wasn't surprised at all. Uh, Terrence Ellie has a lazy left jab. He just flicks it out there to set up the right hand. I told him if he weaved and slipped side to side, he'd be able to get inside without getting hit. But most of the time he got hit when he was backing up straight. Like he said, I'm not trying to make any excuses, but I think the fight that was canceled in Baton Rouge really hurt him a lot. Yes. Hey, you know, hey, you prepared hey. for fight, it's canceled, then he came back to fight. And he could only fight in spurts. He couldn't give me all 12. He was giving me what he had, and that's all you can ask for him. Melvin, uh, obviously, this sets up a situation. You've lost three straight fights. Not all bad performances by any stretch, all against excellent fighters. But uh, I have to ask you, do you think your marketability is going down? No, it's not going down. I'm quite sure to step up, like I say, by the, by the post going fight I had, the head schedule, it kind of somewhat set me back on my timing and rushed me a little bit. But I'm not making an excuse to Terrence Ali, a, a, a dedicated fighter. He's a rough fighter. He, he did what he had to do to win a fight. Like I say, I couldn't fight. I couldn't fight overcrowd like I wanted because of the layoff. Now, if I would have had the fight that was that wasn't ever postponed, I would have been all over Terrence Ali. If I had a chance to do it again, I would be all over Terrence Ali. Okay, maybe Melvin Paul will get the chance again. He's the ex-ESPN champion now, but he fought well tonight. Let's go back to Sam Rose. On paper, this fight looked like it would be a barn burner, but it turned out to be a much more tactical bout. Uh, this was Melvin Paul's career in a nutshell, always coming up just a little short. Uh, he had a tendency to fight in spurts, often not living up to his nickname, Tank. So rather than charging forward, he frequently circled and backpedaled, uh, which contributed to his close decision losses to Brown and here to Ali. Later in his career, Paul was knocked out by Cornelius Boza Edwards and found himself on the receiving end of a highlight reel KO, courtesy of Vinny Pazienza, who famously wound up his right hand before landing the crushing blow on Paul's career. As for Ali, he was one of the busiest fighters of the decade, uh, carving out a reputation for himself in a stacked lightweight division 
And there are a few more of his ballots that I'll be showcasing here on the channel. So thanks for watching.